In previous tutorials, we have seen how to verify the impedance of a coaxial transmission line and also how the dimensions of the coaxial line, namely the diameter of the inner conductor and the inner diameter of the outer conductor, affect the characteristic impedance of the coaxial line. However, it is not easy to fabricate a bespoke coaxial line of a specific characteristic impedance, as you may imagine and uh, normally what one would do is buy a ready-made cable of the right impedance. However, there is another type of transmission line which is a lot more versatile and flexible and uh, can be fabricated very easily and this is a microstrip line. Microstrip lines can be fabricated on substrates of various dielectric constants and by changing the width of the line and the height of the substrate we can change the impedance of the transmission line. Changing the width of the microstrip line is equivalent to changing the diameter of the inner conductor for a coaxial line and changing the height of the substrate is equivalent to changing the inner diameter of the outer conductor for a coaxial line. There are empirical equations which are shown in the manual which one can use to design a microstrip line. However, Microwave Office offers us a much nicer tool than just empirical formulae to be able to design a microstrip line and various types of lines with the characteristics that we desire. To open it, we just go to Tools and then select TX Line. A new window pop up and the first thing that we need to do is change the material parameters. We can uh, choose a specific dielectric uh, from a pull down menu here and when we do this then you will see that the dielectric constant is changed automatically and so are other parameters like the loss tangent. However what we will do in our case is to just insert the various parameters of our substrate manually and then we will use this app to determine the dimensions of the line that we are interested in. First of all, we need to pick a substrate. And as a substrate, we'll choose a very common, yet not a particularly good one, which is called FR4. This type of material is very cheap and very widely used. However, it's quite lossy, and its electric constant varies with frequency over quite a range. Now, we will be using a frequency of 1 GHz in this tutorial, and we know that roughly at 1 GHz, most FR4 substrates have a dielectric constant of 4.5. The loss tangent is a parameter that tells us how lossy our dielectric material is, so how much power is dissipated within the dielectric itself. We want this value to be as low as possible. In the case of FR4, it is around 0.02, which is not fantastic, as we will see in a little bit. In terms of the type of conductor, we can choose copper and then we have to look at the electrical characteristics of the line. The impedance that we want to achieve is 50 ohms. This is standard and this is what most of the time we need to design for. Then there is of course the frequency of operation and this is important uh, because we will need to verify that the transmission line that we've designed is uh, indeed 50 ohms and if you remember the, we can do that by choosing a line with an electrical length of an eighth of a wavelength and the wavelength is directly related to frequency so we need to understand which frequency we are doing our test at and set our parameters accordingly so we need to specify that our frequency of operation is 1 gigahertz then the electrical length now, if you just want to design a microstrip line with a specific characteristic impedance, the electrical length here is immaterial because the electrical length will affect the physical length of the line, but it won't affect its characteristic impedance. In our case, however, we do want to calculate an electrical length of a specific value because, as you recall, to verify the impedance of the line, the technique that we use is to pick a length of line which is equal to lambda by 8, an eighth of the wavelength, and then we terminate the line with a short or an open circuit. 
and a physical length of lambda by 8 corresponds to an electrical length in degrees of 45 degrees. So we'll just type 45 in here and this will allow us to have the calculator work out the length that we need. Now uh, we need to select another couple of parameters in the physical characteristic pane. Well, uh, the thickness of the metal doesn't really matter a great deal. You'll see that if you change this to various values, it doesn't affect the width of the line a great deal. The height of the substrate will pick to be 1.6 millimeters, which yet again is standard. Now, if we click on the right pointing arrow, the simulator will give us a width for our transmission line, which is the width we need to achieve a 50 ohm impedance, and a length which is the length that we need to achieve an electrical length of 45 degrees, which corresponds to a physical length of an eighth of a wavelength. So if we just click on the arrow, the calculation is performed for us, and we can see that we are getting a width for our transmission line of about 3 millimeters, and a physical length of about 20.3 millimeters. Now, there are a couple of things that we need to point out. First of all, Notice in the electrical characteristic how the simulator has calculated another couple of parameters for us here. First of all, the effective dielectric constant. Remember that although the uh, dielectric constant of our material is 4.5, our electromagnetic field is not entirely contained within the dielectric. Part of it is in air and part of it is in the dielectric. So you need to work out some kind of uh, weighted average between the dielectric constant of air and that of the dielectric to then uh, work out, for example, the velocity of propagation. So the velocity of propagation in this case, for instance, is not 1 over square root of epsilon r times the speed of light, but is 1 over square root of epsilon e where epsilon e is the effective dielectric constant time the speed of light. So this is a very important thing with microstrip lines and it comes from the fact that instead of having TEM propagation as we have with a coaxial line, we have a quasi TEM propagation and this means that we have to make these adjustments for the dielectric constant. The other thing that you can see is that the simulator has calculated the loss of our line which is quite bad. I mean it's 3.4 dBs per meter. So for every meter of track you're losing 3.4 dBs in power and that's quite a lot and it's directly proportional to the loss tangent parameter that we put in. In fact if I change the loss tangent parameter now for example to 0.01 and then click on the arrow yet again you can see that the loss of our line is greatly decreased and is around 0.5 dBs per meter. Of course we can pick materials which have a much lower loss tangent but they obviously tend to be more expensive. So let's put our loss tangent back to what it was and uh, click on the arrow again to make sure we get the correct values. Now we've got all the parameters that we need but we can't just transfer this onto a schematic in an automatic fashion. We have to remember the dimensions and then put them in ourselves, but that's not a big deal. The last thing that I want to point out before I close this TX line application is that there are a number of other types of lines that we can design with it. A strip line, for instance, and this is very useful when you have a multi-layer PCB, a coplanar waveguide, which allows you to not have a ground plane at all since you have the signal line in the middle and then you've got the ground planes at the sides of it and then you can even design a round coaxial line so you can put the uh, parameters in there like the dielectric constant and the impedance you want and then you get the inner diameter and the outer diameter which is what you need to determine a specific characteristic impedance. So we have to remember some of the parameters here. The dielectric constant is 4.5, the height of the substrate is 1.6 millimeters, the loss tangent is 0.02, the width of the line is roughly 3 millimeters, and the physical length to achieve a line which has an eighth of a wavelength long is 20.3 millimeters. So let's close the X line 
and then go on to circuit schematics right click open a new schematic we'll call it microstrip on FR4 and then we need to get ourselves a microstrip line we do that by pressing Ctrl L and yet again we can search by description or by name uh, we can for example search by description and type in microstrip line and you can see that at the very top we get something called mlin and this is just what we're looking for so we just double click on that and place it on the schematic like so now we said that the width that we calculated was about 3 millimeters and that the length was about 20.3 millimeters now you may be wondering well where are all the other parameters the electric constant height of the substrate well we need to add an additional element to our schematic in order to specify those and this element is called m sub which is the substrate so i press ctrl l i will do a ctrl click on the name heading because i know that the name of the element i'm looking for is m sub which is a microstrip substrate definition we double click on that and place it on the schematic like so this m sub substrate will be automatically connected to all the microstrip lines in the schematic so basically instead of having to specify the parameters for every single microstrip line that we put in and there may be very many in some schematics we just put all the information in one element and this will be automatically associated by the simulator with each microstrip line so it's very useful now in terms of the dielectric constant we can put 4.5 don't get confused, this parameter is not the effective dielectric constant. It is the nominal dielectric constant of the substrate. The simulator will calculate the effective dielectric constant by itself. Then the height of the substrate we said is 1.6 millimeters. The uh, thickness of the metal we used 10 micrometers. We'll leave the resistivity to what it is and we'll set the loss tangent to 0.02. So we've pretty much set everything that we needed to set. All that's left to do is to terminate our transmission line with a short circuit, which is just a ground connection. So we press Ctrl G and put a ground connection here to create a short circuit to ground. And then we'll press Ctrl P to insert a measurement port and be able to see the magnitude of the impedance as seen at port 1 of this line. Remember that because we've set the length of the line to an eighth of the wavelength and we've short-circuited the line, then the magnitude of the impedance as seen by our port 1 will represent the characteristic impedance of the line. Now, before we do anything else, let's go to Project Options and set the frequency to the correct value. We have to set the frequency to 1 GHz because we calculated our electrical length based on their very frequency and hence unless we do this things won't work click on apply and ok then we go to graphs open a new graph and we'll call it microstrip z note it'll be a rectangular graph and then we just right click on the graph go on to add a new measurement we'll choose again to see the impedance z at port 1 coming from the microstrip on FR4 schematic of course we will just be looking at the magnitude of this impedance click on apply and then ok then simulate you can see that the impedance value is very very close to 50 ohms we've got about 49.99 in fact we could change the scale of the graph slightly to make this even more obvious and we can do this by right clicking on the graph going on to properties and then on the left axis deselect auto limits and say that we start from 40 ohms and end at 60 ohms click on apply and then ok and you can see how we are pretty much bang on on 50 ohms and this goes to show just how accurate the TX line application is now much in the same way as we did for our coaxial line we may want to see how the characteristic impedance of a macrostrip line varies according to its main dimensions the width of the signal line and the height of the substrate remember that the width of the signal line corresponds to the diameter of the inner conductor for a coaxial line and the height of the substrate 
corresponds to the inner diameter of the outer conductor for the coaxial line. Because we don't want to mess with our current schematic, what we can do is duplicate it and we can just click on it and drag it into the circuit schematic heading and then we can just rename it and uh, we'll call it uh, microstrip sweep W because we are going to start with sweeping the width of the line and then as we did before we can use a swept variable so as to create a range of values for the width of our transmission line and we can see how the characteristic impedance varies as we vary the width of the line so as we did before to create a swept variable we first have to create a normal variable and we can declare a normal variable by just clicking on the equation button up in the toolbar here and we'll give it a name, we'll call it WS and assign an initial value to it which is arbitrary so we'll just say WS equals 1 for instance and then we need to get ourselves a swept variable control and we do that by pressing control L typing in SWP and you can see that we already get the swept variable control there and we place it on the schematic like so the variable name would be the one we've just declared and initialized that's WS and then in terms of values we can use a similar syntax to what we used before and we'll just uh, type in stepped and we'll set the initial value to 1 the final value to 10 and the step to 0.1 millimeters. Now what's left to do is just to assign the variable WS to the width of the line. So instead of the 3 millimeters that we had, we just type in WS. We leave all the other parameters of the substrate unchanged. So we will see the effect of the width alone on the characteristic impedance of the line. Let's go to graphs, right click on graph, create a new graph, it will be a rectangular graph and we'll call it Z0 versus W. Now we'll just right click on the graph, go on to add a new measurement, again of course we want the impedance but in this case the data source name will be the uh, microstrip sweep W schematic. We want the impedance seen at port 1. The sweep frequency of course for us is only 1, is 1 gigahertz. So we don't want it on the x-axis. On the x-axis what we want is the various values of the width. So we can either select plot all traces or frequency equals to 1000 MHz. In the case of only one frequency for the simulation these are entirely equivalent. Then we can say that we want our swept variable which is the width of the line to be used for the x-axis. Click on apply and then OK. Then simulate. You can see how the impedance decreases as we increase the width of the line. This is entirely analogous to what we had for the coaxial line. Increasing the width of the signal track means that you can have more current going through and hence the impedance being voltage over current, increasing the current decreases the impedance. For the coaxial line when we increase the diameter of the inner conductor we had exactly the same behavior for the characteristic impedance of the line. Also we can see that for our line of about 3 millimeters in width our characteristic impedance is 50 ohms which is just what we would expect. Now let's go back to our schematics and create another copy that will allow us to sweep the height of the substrate. So because we've got a swept variable already in the schematic which we used to sweep the width, we'll just duplicate that one this time by dragging it onto the circuit schematic heading and then right clicking on it and renaming it. We'll call it sweep H. And then, of course, to avoid confusion, let's change the name of our swept variable to HS, indicating that now we are sweeping the height of the substrate. We obviously have to change this in the swept variable control as well and of course we'll need to select a suitable range of values which will be different to what we used before for the width of the line. So in this case we will start with a height for the substrate of 0.5 millimeters and then we will have a uh, final value of 3 millimeters and we'll use a step of 0.05 millimeters. Now, of course, we'll have to assign the swept variable to the height of the substrate. 
which is defined in the m sub element so we need to then type hs here instead of a specific number of course we also need to set the width of the line to what it used to be which was three millimeters and this way we can see the effect of the height of the substrate alone on the characteristic impedance of the line so now what we can do is duplicate the graph that we had for Z0 versus W by just dragging the graph onto the graph's heading and then of course we will rename this graph accordingly and we'll call it Z0 versus H then we can right click on the graph and go on to modify measurement and uh, we'll select the data source name to be microstrip sweep H schematic because of course this is the one where we want our data to come from again in this case the swept frequency is correct we're just selecting 1000 megahertz or 1 gigahertz and also the swept variable control is assigned to the x-axis which is what we want so click on OK and then simulate now you can see that in this case when we increase the height of the substrate the impedance increases much in the same way as when we increased the inner diameter of the outer conductor for a coaxial line when we increase the height of the substrate we increase the distance between the signal line and the ground reference and hence we increase the voltage difference between the signal line and the ground reference because the impedance is voltage divided by current yet again we are increasing the characteristic impedance of the line 